everybody, Becky Edwards from Purpose Driven Motherhood. I'm so excited. This week we bumped above 1,500 members in this group and it's so fun. I've noticed people from different countries. I live in Utah, the United States, but I've noticed people from Taiwan and from France and India and Africa. If you are in another country, please make a comment in the video below. I would love to see where you're from. This is just so fun to have this big gathering of people who love the gospel and love discussing truth. I love it. So I'm excited to, to share my favorite takeaways from President, or excuse me, Elder Nelson's talk. <laughs> Elder Scott's talk, sorry. Acquiring spiritual knowledge. I love this talk. It's, it's just been one of my favorites forever. It's from 1993 and I just, I love it. So my first takeaway is how he quotes a couple other prophets. And I love when prophets quote each other or apostles because it's a mouth of two or three witnesses and it just boosts that truth to another level. So President Benson, he quotes saying that scriptures are the most important thing or the most important thing we can do is to immerse ourselves in the scriptures. And then he quotes President Kimball where he said, spiritual learning takes precedence. And, and then um, there's another talk, I don't have the reference where where Elder Scott said that that's, um, don't fall for Satan's lie that we don't have time to study scriptures. That's a lie. If we really don't have time, that means we need to revamp our time in our, in our lives, revamp our schedule, our priorities. And he said, scriptures are more important than um, TV, social media, sleep, those kinds of things. And you know what? It's true. It's true. If we don't have time to really connect with God through prayer and scriptures each day, we need to cut something out and Heavenly Father can help us figure that out. Even if we're really, really busy, he can help us figure out how to squeeze that in every single day. So I have an invitation that I'm going to, I'm going to give to you right now. And I, I was asking my family's help today to make this into a rhyme, but I don't know about you, but for me, Satan can distract me from not doing scriptures right away when I, when I really should. I would love to start my day right away with scriptures or the first opportunity that I have right away where instead I, it's really easy to get distracted and a lot of that distraction has to do with technology and you know whether it's Facebook, email, texting, um, checking the weather on the phone, whatever it is and then it's really easy to get pulled away and not make as much time or not do it as early in the day as I planned on um, for my deep connecting prayer and scripture study. So my challenge to all of us is to make scriptures and prayer such a high priority in our morning that we don't do, don't turn on any technology or I guess it could be turned on, but we don't look at it. We don't look at the technology gadgets until we've connected with God. So the little saying that my husband came up with was before tech connect, before tech connect. And I thought that was super cute. In fact, I'm going to do a contest. And if any of you want to enter, um, let's, let's say by mm, Friday of this week, Friday of this week, if anybody would like to enter and make like a Mormon ad kind of meme, which a meme is a picture with words, um, then I would love to see some ideas about how we can make this into a picture before tech connect. Um, I just love that idea. So, and, and I have a little prize right here, which is a little oil lamp straight from the, the old city of Jerusalem. I, I purchased this myself and I will personally mail that to whoever wins that contest. Okay, so now I wanna talk about principles. This is such a powerful talk about principles. Oh my goodness, so, so powerful. So I wanna show you an object lesson that I've taught my seminary kids about principles. And that is, that a gold miner, when they're in the cave and they're looking for gold, the rock is really important because the little veins of gold, let's just pretend there's veins of gold in this rock. The little veins of gold are in the rock. They're embedded in the rock. So the rock's a big deal. It's important to them, but it's not the most important thing to the gold miner, right? What they're looking for is the gold. And it's just like that with principles and scripture stories. The scripture story is like the rock. It's important. But the most important thing are the principles that we find inside the stories. I love that. And I'm telling you right now, if you've never searched for principles as you study the scriptures, try it, practice it, and experiment with it, play with it, because 
it brings the scriptures to a whole new level. It helps them be so much more meaningful, so much more applicable to your life, and it anchors them into your heart in ways that you can't get if you just read the stories. If you look for principles and, and you, you take the time, like Elder Scott says, to write them down, um, then you will just, it'll, it'll just be such a delicious experience. So um, here are a couple of ideas of how, oh, actually, I love, I want to just um, share what I love about what Elder Scott says about principles. The principles are concentrated truth packaged for application, uh, I'm paraphrasing, in a wide variety of circumstances. This is paragraph six. Um, they, the principles make de uh, decisions clear, even if like the, there's confusion around that decision, principles help bring clarity, which is really cool. And it's worth a lot of effort to organize truth into simple statements of principle. I love it. So my, oh, I wanna show you also a little book that Elder Nelson, excuse me, Elder, I don't know why I keep calling him that. Elder Scott wrote, hi guys, thanks for your little uh, hearts and thumbs up. So Elder Scott wrote this and it is called 21 Principles, Divine Truths to Help You Live by the Spirit. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. He also wrote, wrote lots of cool talks that have to do with this. So I'm going to show you a couple of several places that you can write principles. The, the easiest one, I think, is just in the margins of your own scriptures or the margins of your talks that you're studying. So you kind of highlight and then maybe, you know, write a little uh, paraphrase of the principle in the margin and then make a little arrow or a line that goes to the verse that you're that you're talking about. So um, one way that's easy to, a little question that's easy to help you find principles is, what's a life lesson here? What's a life lesson from this story? What is, or another one is, what's this author trying to teach me? So a life lesson or what's the author trying to teach me? So um, I'll share one example. First Nephi 3.7, that's where Nephi um, was asked by Lehi, his father, to go back to Jerusalem and get the brass plates. And Nephi said, yeah, I'll go and do what the Lord commands because I know he'll make a way for me to do it. I know he's not going to command me to do something without helping me. So in my margins, I wrote, when God commands, he empowers. Now, think about Elder Scott's definition of a principle. It works in a lot of different applications, right? That, that divine, that principle works across the board. It also, let me find, let me find my list here. Um, it makes decisions clear that if God commanded you, even if you're like, I don't know how to do that, I'm confused. You can cut right through that and go, wait, when God commands, he empowers, he makes a way. And it just helps you make that decision more clearly. And it's worth great effort. Was that worth great effort to be able to anchor that truth inside? For, I'm going to ask myself, yes, worth great effort. I have relied on that principle over and over and over in my life. As I have been prompted to do things, I thought, there is no way I can do that. There's no way. It, it looks utterly impossible to me. But I've been given the power. And as I remember the principle that Nephi taught in that beautiful verse, oh, I just love it. It's anchored into me. I own that verse. I own that principle. It's so, so much a part of me. And everybody can own it. Not just me. Everybody can own that and anchor that into them. Okay. Another place that you can write principles is a scripture journal or a revelation journal or whatever kind of journal. <laughs> um, so you can just, you can write a principles in here, like a little, you know, you kind of rewrite into your own words what you feel that scripture story or that author is trying to teach you. And it might be completely different than what somebody else gets out of the story. That's why the spirit is so important when we study because he can teach us individually through all these different stories. He can teach us. I love it. So you can have your own journal. You can also have a family principle journal. Now I got this idea from Hank Smith, who is, um, who has a, a CD that I highly recommend about finding principles in the scriptures. It's called scripture power. And I even got permission, um, to play part of that for my seminary class. Cause it, it just, well, he's hilarious for one thing, but he does a really good job of helping you understand why looking for principles is so powerful. So he recommended getting a family scripture, a family principle journal. So I'm just going to read a couple of the principles that we found. Let's see. Um, okay, here we go. This is from 2 Nephi 9, 
somewhere around verse 30. I'm not sure exactly which verse. No matter how much we know, God knows more. Never think you're smarter than God. This is a really good principle that we can apply in a lot of situations, right? Let me find one more here. Um, okay, this is Genesis 40, when Joseph of Egypt uh, interpreted the bakers in the butler's dream. The principle is the Lord blesses the obedient even if they're in prison. Cool principle. Even if your ideal, your circumstances aren't ideal, you still get blessed when you're obedient and loyal to God. So that's another idea, is a family principle journal. Um, I'm gonna show you one other. This is something that I did for my seminary class last year. I don't, I'm not teaching seminary this year, but I taught the Old Testament last year, and I made them little principle books. And I put little quotes that are all from this talk that we're um, studying this week from Elder Scott. So I'll share a couple of principles from Old Testament people. So Esau, listen to this principle from Esau. And I really encouraged my kids, the seminary kids, to come up with these. Occasionally I would help them come up with them, but they were fantastic. With practice, you become really good at coming up with principles. Um, in fact, let me interrupt myself and say, um, our family, once I learned how important principles are, we, we shifted how we study scriptures as a family. So we might, we, we might each read, I don't know, three or four verses, um, and then we summarize what we read, and then we find a principle in there. And with that kind of practice, my kids have all become quite good at finding principles, even if <laughs> occasionally they're like, I can't find anything in that little section of verses. But, and sometimes somebody else can jump in and help them. But I'm amazed how good young people can, how well they can find principles if they practice a little bit. So here is one from Esau. Are you ready for this? Don't give up what you want most for what you want in the moment. Oh, powerful principle that we can use in all kinds of circumstances, right? So powerful. Okay, here's one from Jacob. Marrying the right person in the right place at the right time is worth any sacrifice. Like his sacrifice was he had to work for 14 years, including he was deceived by his uh, new father-in-law. That's a huge sacrifice, right? Huge sacrifice. What, how can the young people of our day apply that? Well, they have, they have to sacrifice, keep, they have to keep the law of chastity. That's a sacrifice. They have to um, keep their, their thoughts pure as they can. They have to avoid yucky media. And, and if they mess up, they repent and they go see the bishop. And it's worth any price, any price. They have to avoid um, tempting situations or people who will tempt them to do bad things because getting married in the temple at the right time is worth any price. Cool principle we learned from Jacob. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more. This one is Joseph of Egypt. Oh, can I just tell you how much I love that story? I blogged about that story. There are so many types of Christ in so many of these um, beautiful Old Testament figures. And Joseph of Egypt has like 20 something. It is a beautiful, beautiful story. So here's one, I'm gonna read two. It's better to have a clean conscience in prison than to have a guilty heart in a nice house. Ah, my kids came up with that one. I love that. Here's another one. My seminary kids did. God can turn big trials into big blessings. Because Joseph of Egypt had like massive trials, right? Seriously, huge. Like his family like kicked him out. He was, you know, almost killed by his brothers. Um, goes to prison for something he did not do, even though he was impecc impeccably honest. Uh, <laughs> just thing after thing, he was had a hard life. But God can make ashes into beauty. God can turn any of our yucky stuff into amazing results. And he ended up saving the entire country of Egypt and his own family because he was in the right place at the right time. So God can turn big trials into big blessings. Isn't that a powerful principle? So this, this little principle book that we did with our seminary class, it's precious to me. I love it. I love, love, love it. Let's see. Um, and I can't remember if I already told you this one or not, because I'm going to say it again. So Joseph Smith has this famous quote about the Book of Mormon, where he says, I'm paraphrasing this, that man can get near to God by abiding by the precepts of the Book of Mormon than by any other book. Now that doesn't mean if you just read the book, you have to live the principles. And I may have already said that. I'm sorry if I did. <laughs> I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> Let's see. Um, 
let's see here. Okay, awesome. Um, so I also love in paragraph, mm, I didn't write down, let me find it. It is in paragraph 10 where, where Elder Scott quotes President Joseph F. Smith that the greatest achievement mankind can, um, can make in this world is to familiarize themselves with divine truth so thoroughly that basically no matter who around you may fall, no matter what sins they may commit, no matter if other people that you trust and love, if they leave the church, if they you know, lose their testimonies, it will not shake you. It just won't. It won't. And it reminds me of um, a scripture, mastery scripture, uh, Helaman 512, that when you build your rock upon the Redeemer, the Christ, when you build your foundation upon the rock of Christ, you are so anchored in, so strongly, so deep, that you can have the mighty whirlwinds of Satan. You can have people you love leaving the church. You can have all these temptations around you. You will not fall. I love that. And I'm telling you right now, upgrading your scripture study to look for principles and to write down as you're, as you're pondering, to write down the little inspirations that come to you, that is a beautiful way to anchor yourself in the, in the rock of the Redeemer. It anchors you in. You are building that foundation on Christ. I encourage you, if you've never tried that before, do it. Start today. Start tomorrow. Do it right away. It will anchor you more deeply and because you know what? It's the last days. People are falling. There are people, you probably have people in your life, whether it's family members, friends, people from your ward, your area, who just, they don't believe anymore. Or maybe they've become really anti-LDS. <laughs> and it's okay because our faith and our testimony is not based on a person. It is based on the Savior, Jesus Christ, and his gospel that he gave to us. And when we anchor ourselves into that, we can't, we won't fall. It's really powerful. Um, let's see. Okay, so back to my little, my little um, uh, oil lamp that I got from Jerusalem. I love paragraph uh, 38 where Elder Nelson says, let me find it here. He says, profound spiritual truth cannot be simply be poured from one mind to another. And it reminds me of the 10 virgins. Totally. Doesn't that remind you of the 10 virgins? When I was younger, I just didn't understand. I'm like, well, isn't it about preparedness for the last days? You know, it's about the second coming and being prepared. And I kind of thought it was about like food storage and sleeping bags. <laughs> I just didn't understand. It was all really about spiritual preparedness. And so now that I've, I've been to Israel and I see what these little, these little lamps are like, imagine. So you've got, you've got, I, I don't know, this holds maybe a fourth a cup of oil, maybe. Um, and then you light the little um, wick right here. You light the wick and then the, there's a flame right here. So imagine you're trying to keep your flame alive and you're trying to pour oil into someone else's lamp. That is not going to work very well, right? It's just not going to work. That helped me understand what the 10 virgins parable was all about. You've got to do it yourself. That spiritual preparation has to be done all I, well, you can have help, but it really has to be chosen by us. We have to do the work. We have to do the work. And same thing here, that it takes faith. Let's see, precious truths come a small piece at a time through faith, great exertion, and at times wrenching struggles. And then listen to this. I love this. The Lord intends it to be that way so we can mature and progress. It's part of the plan. It's part of the plan that it takes work and effort and the answers don't always come all in one big package immediately. It's part of the plan that we get little bits as we work for them. And it reminds me of a quote that I heard. I don't even remember who said it, but I love it. And it was, God cares more about our progress than he cares about our comfort. Because he wants us back. That's what this life is all about. Help us transform into beings who are worthy to be in his presence forever. That is awesome. So if it takes extra work for us to fill our own little lamps up with drop and drop and drop of oil, like President Kimball has talked about and now Elder Scott, that's great. It's part of the plan. Let's do the work. And it is delicious. It can be truly delicious. Okay, my last takeaway is from the last page. I'm going to um, tell share my principle from paragraphs 41 through 45. This is a really cool section where he's talking about his... Um, his versions of what we should do 
to really treasure the truth and help it anchor it and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to share my little own words of his, all those paragraphs. Okay. So my words are prayerfully pondering and writing, thanking God, obeying and sharing truth. So this is all about truth. When we prayerfully ponder about truth and write about it. And for me, pondering and writing happen a lot at the same time. And if I thank Heavenly Father for truth, and then I obey it and I share it, and it's easy to share just in family home meeting or in testimony meeting or in a Relief Society lesson or on Facebook or find a meme or, or just share this. Hey, I, this is so cool. If you're a blogger, that's an easy way to share truth. Then, so if you do those things, then you receive more truth and light. Isn't that beautiful? We have an exact, we have a formula. We have a formula from God through Elder Scott's beautiful message here that he has taken years and years to pull these principles together for us and explain that in such a beautiful way. And well, I think he said it took him years. I might be wrong about that. <laughs> anyway, it took him time and effort and you know, work. And then, and now we have this formula, this beautiful formula. That prayerful, I'm gonna, I'm gonna count them on my finger. I have six little things in this list: prayerfully pondering and writing, thanking God, obeying and sharing. <laughs> sharing the truth helps us receive more truth. I love it. It also helps truth anchor into our hearts better, and it helps us understand it, and it just brings us closer to Christ. Right? It's just, oh, I just, I love it. I love truth. It's so fun. Okay, let's see if there are, is anything else I wanted to share with you. Um, so I do want to share a, a little um, teaching that my stake, my stake president in my BYU married student stake, he shared with us like a long time ago because it's been a while since we've been at BYU. Um, it's been 17 years since my husband graduated from law school. Almost 18 years actually. And um, he was, he believes so strongly in this concept that personal scripture study is a means to receiving personal revelation if we, if we choose it. And like that he knew that people, people at our uh, Y Mount Terrace housing, they were, they lived, they were from all over the planet. We had people from all these different countries and they knew that those people would go back into their, their places all over the world and become leaders leaders in their families, leaders in business, leaders in the church, leaders in communities. And he wanted all of us to be armed with this one beautiful concept of using scripture study as a means to receiving personal revelation. So I'm going to teach you this little model that they taught us. And it opens, it, I mean, it's like a sandwich. The sandwich opens and closes with prayer, which is awesome. So the first prayer you start with is asking a question. It can be any question, any question like, um, like, what can I do to help this child? Or it could be, okay, should I take this job or not? Or it could be, uh, you know, maybe you're having a question about your testimony. Any question. So you bring a question to God, and I recommend writing it down. It's always more concrete when you write something down. Then you go to wherever you feel inspired by the Spirit to start studying. And Wendy Watson Nelson, she talks about you just bloop, let the scriptures randomly open. So there's not one right way to do this. You can do it all kinds of ways. But the idea is you've got a question and you're going to the scriptures. So you might be prompted like, oh, I think there was a conference talk two conferences ago by so-and-so. Let's look at that up. And you might read that for five minutes and then go, ooh, that was good. Let me. Now I feel like I should go look at Jacob in the Book of Mormon. Or I think I'm supposed to read about Moses. And, and you just are open to receiving that guidance. And then as you find little nuggets of yummy light and wisdom, then you stop and ponder and write. You stop and ponder and write. And, and again, you're looking for answers to your question. So that's the context that your mind is in. And, and you may not have noticed answers immediately, but as you ponder and write, the spirit can totally teach you. I can tell you right now, I receive so much revelation as I write. Sometimes I don't even know what the answer is, but I just start writing my thoughts about the scripture. Oh, it reminds me of this. And this prophet said that. And and it kind of applies in my life in this way. And then suddenly I just start getting little impressions and like, oh, ooh, oh, that's a cool concept. That's a good way to apply this. Oh my gosh. And at the right, during the pondering and writing phase, wow, because you've stilled your mind, you are focusing on listening to the spirit. And when you write, Heavenly Father wants to give you more. 
It's like if you had a teenager who said, mom, dad, that is such good advice. Will you just pause for a second while I go get my journal? Cause I want to come back and write down what you said. That was amazing. Wouldn't you be like, Oh, that's cool that they care about what I say. And it would make you want to give really quality advice. So I'm sure Heavenly Father feels honored and appreciated when we thank him and we write it down and we go live it. We go follow what he says. So it goes, ask and thank. Those are the two prayers at the front and the end of this little model. And then in between, we've got um, study, wherever you feel guided to, ponder and write, and then think. So ask, study, ponder, write, think. Is that five steps? Ask, study, ponder, write, think. Five steps to this little model. And it simply is one way of using personal scripture study as a means to personal revelation. Very cool. Wendy Watson Nielsen gave a, another really awesome way to do it um, in her talk number two, if you haven't listened to that one, or watched that one. Fantastic challenge. It doesn't matter how you do it. Just, just dig into the scriptures. Don't just scuba dive the surface. Uh, what I mean is, ha! <laughs> Don't just snorkel the surface. Don't just stay at the top. There are treasures when you dig deeply. Scuba dive, scuba dive, scuba dive. It is what anchors us into the gospel, what anchors us into Christ. When we find these principles and we journal and we, we ask questions and we find the answers through the spirit in whatever we study. I found crazy answers in stories like weird, <laughs> like that you would think, that is not a story that will probably answer my question, but I'm just going to go for it. And then I'm like, oh, it answered my question because the spirit can do that for us. It's really, really cool. Okay. Now, thank you for letting me share. That was so fun. Now, um, I want to reiterate this little contest that I want to do for anybody who likes to make memes if, or if you, don't want, if you don't know how, watch a tutorial or two this week. PicMonkey is an easy site and you can use it for free. Um, that to make memes, but I would love to do a little contest for a Mormon ad with this new little this new little uh, mantra of before tech connect, which means like don't get distracted by your phone and your computer and your iPad and all these other things. In first thing in the morning, connect with God through prayer and scriptures. And whoever wins the contest, I will mail you this beautiful little oil lamp straight from Jerusalem. Okay, you ready for the next talk? Okay, let me grab it. It's actually two talks because um, the, the one that I um, am having, these talks I'm actually using for a different group, um, a, a group mentoring 12 week program, but I wanted to share them with a big, you know, wider audience. So this group is only made up of women. So we're, this week we're using Mothers Who Know by Julie Beck, which is fantastic, classic talk about mothers. Um, I'm just gonna read a couple little quotes from there. Home is where women have the most powerful influence. Woo! Love it. And there is eternal influence and power in motherhood. This is a pretty short talk. It's about, it's less than two pages. It's, very, it's not very long and it's meaty and beautiful and delicious. Now, because I know we have men in the group, for anybody who wants to read, I mean, you can read both if you want. You can choose one or the other. But I have been searching all week long for a really awesome talk on fathers, and I have read a handful or listened to a handful of really good talks from fathers, all the way from President Benson all the way up. So the one that I chose is Fathers, and it's by um, Elder Christofferson, and it is from May, uh, well, the, the April General Conference last year, 2016. So I'm just going to read a little, give you a little appetizer, a little teaser for this um, as a church, we believe in fathers. We believe in the ideal of the man who puts his family first. And then he says, this one actually made me cry because I just appreciate my husband so much. He said, breadwinning is a consecrated activity. Oh, breadwinning is a consecrated activity. I, the older I get, and I've been married 25 years now, I just appreciate so much how much my husband sacrifices to provide for our family. He works a lot of hours and he, he works hard and he helps people in lots of different ways. And I thank him. I, I thank you for working so hard for us. And I love that it is what it is. It is a divine role of fathers. And I just love it. I love this talk. So that's what we have this week is Mothers Who Know by Julie Beck and Fathers by Elder Christofferson. 
So as soon as I'm done with this video, I will upload those into our group, both um, on, on this post, so I'll have them above this video, I'll have, have them in the pinned post, scroll down to the bottom of that, and I'll also have them in the files. So, let's see, I'm trying to think if I missed anything. I think that's it, I think that's it. Thank you so much for being part of this group. I love everybody here. I wish I could just hug all of you because I just love you guys so much. Have a fantastic week and I will see you next Sunday.